In this video, we will have a look at the fine minorants of convex functions and how convex functions can be characterized by the set of affine minorants. And affine minorants will be important, especially when it comes to subdifferentials, because subdifferentials will define certain affine minorants, but in particular um, to duality, um, where we basically um, form a dual function by taking the set of affine minorants and show that um, we have um, duality relations between uh, the function and its dual and that they are closely related. So um, uh, let us start by uh, defining what affine minorants are. Okay. So let's give a definition. Okay. A function um, let's call it f, which maps um, from our usual finite dimensional inner product space to the set of real numbers, not our bar this time, um, is called affine if it can be written as um, f of x equals the inner product of x with some vector a uh, plus some constant alpha for some a in h and alpha in r. Um, so without the alpha um, with alpha equals zero, you would call this a linear functional um, because you have um, all the things you expect from linearity. f of x plus y is f of x plus f of y. And um, the it, uh, scales with, with uh, uh, so f of lambda x equals lambda f of x, like this. Um, with this alpha, um, it's called a fine. And Obviously, every linear functional is an affine function. Okay. Now, uh, we have to define what a minorant is. Um, so, it, uh, referring to function f, it is called minorant of a function uh, G and this function G can be uh, can take values in R bar if um, f of x um, is smaller than G uh, everywhere so for all x in H. Okay, so this means that uh, whenever we have like a function um, g here, convex, can take values in plus infinity if you want, um, then um, the uh, an affine minorant would be like this. And this here is the alpha, and the normal vector is the a. Okay, and now the question is, um, and we will answer this question in a theorem. Um, what can we say about affine minorants of proper convex and lower semi-continuous functions? Okay, let f h r to which maps h to r bar be proper convex and low semi-continuous, um, then um, we have two points. The first point is um, there exists an affine minorant of f, 
it's a bit confusing because we have to find f and then find minor on f of a function g. But you, so this me this means that you can find an affine function which is everywhere smaller than f. Okay. And b, um, f is the pointwise supremum of all its affine minor runs. This means you can write f of x as the supremum of all um, ax plus alpha with a in h alpha in r and um, for all y uh, you have a y plus alpha is less or equal than g of oh not g of course because I was looking at this definition here yeah at f um, so we are we're talking about minor runs for f so this minor run is everywhere um, less or equal than f and in any point uh, you can write f as a supremum of as f of x the function value as a supremum of all these minor runs which are less or equal than uh, f also at any other points so this is the um, this is the content of this uh, theorem and it looks like point a is contained in coin, point b because if the if the set of affine minor runs were empty um, then you would take the supremum over infinity uh, the, the supremum of the empty set sorry and this is minus infinity you know, supremum over nothing um, so the supremum is the lowest upper bound and the upper, uh, lowest upper bound of nothing is just minus infinity and um, but uh, uh, the point of this is we use actually we will use point A in the proof of point B so it does make sense to formulate it uh, separately and, and proves, prove it separately. Okay, so in the remainder of this video we will only give the proof of A and then in the next video B because of the size of, of, of this uh, uh, video frame. Uh, unfortunately, it is not large enough for, for everything. Okay, so point A. Um, so we need to prove that um, there exists an affine minor round of f. And we have to use proper convex low semi-continuous. And we will use these points. By the way, pro all, of the, all of these points are, are uh, really needed for this. Um, if f were not proper, then you then there would you could you could choose f e equal to a, a function which takes the values minus infinity on some convex sets, um, on some closed convex set by uh, that is, and um, the this supremum of this would be empty, and uh, the empty supremum gives minus infinity constant. So if this if the domain of this degenerate function is is not the whole space then uh, this theorem will fail convexity is necessary because you can you could otherwise um, for example um, yeah let me try a different color here so if you if you were to to put a, a non-convex function here this thing here can never be uh, the supremum of the pointwise supremum of convex functions because the supremum of convex functions is convex and similarly um, the supremum of lower semi-continuous functions is lower semi-continuous um, because the, the epigraph of the supremum of functions is the intersection of epigraphs and the intersection of closed sets which are so epigraphs of, con of um, lower semi-continuous functions are closed is also closed. Um, so this shows that all of these 
points proper convex lower semicontinues are in fact necessary. All right, so uh, let's go on. There exists in a fine minor end of F. Okay, since F is proper, um, we have that the domain of F is non-empty. So take some element x bar in the domain of F. Uh, what does this mean? Then f of x bar is a real number. Uh, because it can't be plus infinity because it's in, in the domain. It can't be minus infinity because we have still properness. Uh, so since f is proper. Okay. So now we have a real value here. So what we know is um, if we take the pair of x bar and f of x bar minus 1, then this point is not in the epigraph of f. Because f of x bar minus 1 is uh, strictly smaller than f of x bar, and therefore it's not in the epigraph. So since f of x bar is less than uh, f, of x, uh, f of x bar minus 1, of course, is minus 1, is less than f of x bar. Okay. Um, there's a closing parenthesis missing. Okay, now we have um, epi uh, that this point is not in epi f. Epi f is closed, convex, and non-empty. Uh, closed because f is lower semi-continuous, convex because f is convex, and non-empty, yeah, uh, since f is proper. And we will see x bar, f of x bar, is in fact an element of this epigraph. Okay. So we can apply our separation theorem. And since we can't guarantee that the interior of the epigraph is non-empty, we can't apply the, um, the, separa the, yeah, the separation theorem which requires this. Um, so we, we only have one choice. We, have the, we, we only can use the, um, the, the strong separation theorem. And here we have a point and a set. And the point is not contained in the set. We can also use, by the way, the second. Um, so we can use the set which only consists of this point, which is then bounded, which would also um, uh, suffice. Um, yeah, uh, but let's just use the separation and the strong, by the way, the strong separation um, point set. This means there exists some pair in the same space here, and as we, we have the epigraph, the epigraph consists of pairs. So we also give, get a pair here, and the, um, the, this thing has norm one, so it's definitely not um, zero, zero. So it's definitely not the case that A and alpha both are zero. Um, this is weaker than norm of, of this is one because we will change this anyway. We, we, we will divide by alpha. So we, we are not interested in, in anything else. We're just interested in um, the fact that this is not uh, zero. And we have this such that. And now you take the infimum over all elements f, x, r in the epigraph of f. And now you take the inner product in the space where um, the of of yeah the epigraph, and this is as as we have uh, defined. Um, you take the first components, take a and x. X is the first component here, plus, and now you take the second component alpha r and 
um, this infimum should be bigger, or the the, record, the the statement of the strong separation theorem is that this infimum is bigger. So any any for any element, this is bigger with some margin uh, than a x bar plus. And now we have um, alpha f of x bar minus 1. Okay, let me draw a line here. Okay. Now let's see what this means. Um, first of all, we want to establish that, that alpha is not equal to 0 because we want to divide by alpha. And we also have an inequality, so we, we, we do care about the sign of alpha. So let's first establish that. So by noting that uh, we can uh, put x bar, f of x bar here, so because this is an element of the epigraph of f, x bar, f of x bar, um, satisfies the definition. And the infimum is always smaller than any um, like any any set in the, any element in this set, you take the infimum over. Um, you can just estimate this by a chain which continues this to the left. So the infimum is smaller than whatever we write now when we when we put in this special element here. So we have a x bar plus alpha f of x bar is greater than, well, a x bar plus alpha f of x bar minus alpha, just multiplying this out. And now we see that, well, this thing appears twice, this thing also appears twice, and we have zero is greater than minus alpha, which means alpha is greater than zero, which is important if we uh, if we want to do stuff with alpha. Okay, now we can we can still use this inf infimum here, um, um, since for all, and now we take x in the domain of f. And then, uh, analogously to what we concluded here, um, f, uh, not, f, not f, sorry, x, f of x, then if, f, if x is in the domain of f, f of x is of course a real number, so we are safe with, uh, with respect to that. X or f, and, and this is an element of the epigraph of f. We have the infimum of something is greater than uh, this. We take special elements of this uh, of this infimum here. So this is an element of EPF. So we can again continue this chain to the left. I, I think that's also left in the video this direction at least. And therefore we know um, for all x and dom f, we know the infimum is less or or equal to a x plus alpha f of x and this is greater than a x bar plus alpha f of x bar minus alpha. Okay, and now we can just um, show what, what happens for, for f of x, just eliminate everything else. So put this, this inner product to the left and divide by alpha. And this is why we wanted to establish that alpha is greater than zero. And so f of x, and here we, we really don't need greater, we can also write greater or equal than, just to match the definition of a minorant here, um, where we wrote, um, we will also allow this equal sign. f of x greater or equal than, and now you put this on the right, so you have minus a in the inner product with x, 
and you divide by alpha, so minus a over alpha in the inner product with x. Okay, now we have this, we have this, and now we have to, to establish the constant term. Constant means that it does not depend on x, can however depend on x bar. And this is plus f of x bar um, minus 1 plus 1 over alpha a of x bar. Okay, and now we have constructed by the means of separation some um, a fine minor end, the normal vector to, of which is minus a over alpha, and the, the constant term is f of x bar minus 1 plus 1 over alpha in a product of a of x bar. So this is the constant term, and this is um, this is the, the element in h. So this defines an uh, affine minor end of f. And now you have seen how we can employ our separation theorem to construct things. Like here we, we have constructed a vector a and a vector alpha such that we have an affine minor end. And in a similar way you can, you can uh, do this for, for other uh, relations which, which you can express in, in, by means of the separation of two convex sets. And in the next video we will prove part B.